Hello and welcome back to the absolute last chemistry video. Yay! Oh, I'm gonna miss them so much. They've been so informative. Not. Okay, uh, so today we're gonna talk about solutions and acids and bases and that's it. What about gases? Eh, forget gases. You don't really need to know those. It's not like they exist everywhere. Okay, so to really understand this, we have to do the periodic table of elements again, and we have to do a quick review of chemical bonds. So we're, I'm going to put that down all right, like that, and we're going to talk about uh, metals, nonmetals, uh, and metalloids, basically. Not 100%. So first thing is, let's talk about uh, nonmetals. Nonmetals live up here, and we're going to talk about um, how badly they want electrons. There's a term for how badly you want an electron. It's called electronegativity. This number goes all the way up to basically four. So oxygen super high up. It goes from zero to four more or less. Um, and this is really high up and that's because oxygen lives up here. So all these nonmetals up here really want one more electron or two or three. They want more electrons so they can be like the noble gases. So in this area of the periodic table, they really want electrons. And they're going to try as hard as they can to attract electrons to them. So let's pick a movie that is very attractive to people and let's put that there. So this part of the periodic table is gonna be super attractive to electrons, hoping to get eight so they can be like noble gases and win the game. Okay, well, what about uh, the other side? Well, the other side, that's going to be wah, 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 super low. In fact, these guys have too many electrons. They actually want to get rid of electrons. So they don't want electrons to swing on by. So if we put this over here on this side of the periodic table, we're going to see that, that, that they do not want more electrons. So they're going to show videos that are not super attractive. But I love the Fantastic Four of Rise of Silver Surfer. No, you didn't. You're just being antagonistic. And then there's um, there's this guy right here. That guy. Hey, didn't we say that that guy's kind of a platypus and that he really should be kind of over here because he really just wants one more electron to act like him? Yeah, we did. So, And his name is Hydrogen. And you'll notice he's kind of a middling. Uh, you know, halfway between zero and four, he's kind of a middle dude. So we're going to put Hydrogen, just that guy right there. We're going to say that he's... Uh, a fine movie, you know, he wouldn't mind an electron, he wouldn't kill for it, so there we go. We'll take a Midland movie, uh, Iron Man specifically 2, uh, yep, yeah, there we go, and we'll just put that there. Okay, so if you are from this part of the periodic table, you're really going to want electrons and you're going to try to attract them badly. If you're from this part of the periodic table, which is most of the metals, uh, you're not gonna really want electrons and you're not gonna try to attract them. If you're specifically hydrogen, you're fine with electrons, you're kind of that middle number. Sure, I'd take another one, but I'm not gonna go out and really you know, kill myself for this and you'd have an okay attraction to electrons. So what does that mean? How does this work? Well, let's take our periodic table and just kind of shift this to the side so we have some workspace. No, 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 no. There we go, we're gonna leave that as a reference and then we'll work over here and say, okay, well, what if we put a couple of these things together? So first thing, what if we take something with a really high electronegativity and a not very high electronegativity? Well, what's gonna happen when we put these together? Well, given those options in movies, Avengers Endgame and Silver <laughs> Rise of the Silver Surfer, uh, electrons are actually going to leave this theater, go to that theater, and stay there for the entire movie. So what we would see here is we would see electrons actually leave, and we would see an ionic bond form. As in, this would become negatively charged as the, uh, as the electrons leave, they're going to pick up a negative charge, and then this one would gain a positive charge because it used to have the same number of protons and electrons, but now it has more protons because the electrons have left. So the number of protons doesn't change, but with less electrons, the protons would kind of shine through like the Care Bear stare. Yes, I just said Care Bears. Okay, so if you have this kind of an event, 
you're going to get an ionic bond. So that means you are going to have a negative charge and a positive charge, and that's going to be full time. Okay, so if I take one of these guys and I take one of these guys, so remember we're talking about these, the electrons are going to leave here, go there, and we'll have that sort of a thing. Okay, now what if we, I don't know, put a midlin? What if we have like oxygen and, I don't know, hydrogen? Okay, what does that look like? So now we have a really attractive movie and an um, okay movie. Well, what's going to happen there is you're going to, the electrons are definitely going to kind of spend more time in this theater. They're going to spend more time around this atom, but they will occasionally drop in. You know, there, maybe there's a moment in this movie they're not as excited about and they want maybe remember that one moment they actually like from Iron Man 2. So we would see the electrons spend more time here, but occasionally come back. So as they zip around, they zip, 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 oh, what's going on here? And then back, and then what's going on here? And then back. So we would see that on, on this side, there'd be uh, more electrons most of the time, but occasionally it might even balance out. And even, you know, every so often there might even be more here. So what we would see is we would see relative charges. This would be relatively negative. This would be relatively positive. And this is kind of a part-time event. So if we take anything from here and hydrogen, right, most of the time the electrons are going to be here, but occasionally even out or even the, the other way. Okay, and what if you, I don't know, took any two, like it could even be sodium and sodium, took the exact same movie or something with very similar. Well, if your options are Rise of Silver Surfer and Rise of Silver Surfer, I hope you choose Rise of Silver Surfer. So what that means is there's going to be no chance for of electrons. We're not going to have a negative or positive uh, dealy maboober going on here at all. So uh, what we would see is no charge. Right. So if we take this and this, you're going to have a full time positive and negative charge. This and this, you're going to have partial charges, which is also true for this and this. And if you have two of the same as in both hydrogens or both oxygens or both sodiums or whatever, uh, there's going to be no charge. It's not 100% true for sodium because of metallic bonding. Okay, move on, move on. You're okay. So the question is, Wait, chemical bonding isn't up here. Why are you even mentioning chemical bonding? Because this is super important for that. And the question is, what dissolves? So let's get this out of here. That was a nice little reminder of how the periodic table is laid out. And let's start talking about water. Well, this oxygen and hydrogen is the same as this oxygen and hydrogen, which means uh, oxygen, the electrons are going to part-time be up here more often. So we'd have a relative negative charge, which means there's just going to be more electrons around the oxygen most of the time. Oh, sorry, we can remove that. Okay, so, uh, so this oxygen does play the magnetism game a little bit, and that, that really, really matters. Because if you have something with an ionic bond, so if you have something with, let's say, we talked about sodium chloride. And I'll do a quick Lewis-Dot structure. Water can totally interact with this, 100%, because it has positive and negatives. And that means that the positive end can pull the chlorine out because it has a negative charge and surround it. And the negative end of water can pull the sodium out and surround it. So we have the negative end surrounding the positive ends. That's just magnets. We have the positive end surrounding the negative atom. That's just magnets. So what we're going to find out is that, yep, ionic, over here. If you're an ionic bond, check, you will dissolve in water. 
because you're going to have some sort of pos uh, positive and negative end. There's going to be parts of you that are negative. There's going to be parts of you that are positive, and water can just surround you and pull you away. So if you're an ionic bond, ding, you're going to dissolve. Okay. Now, what if you are polar covalent? So polar covalent... Polar covalent means that you are sharing, covalent means sharing, but you're not sharing evenly. You're spending more time around one than the other. So uh, that would be things like sugars and so, oh wait, what about just other water? Why water is polar covalent, right? Uh, so if you take something like uh, sugar or anything that has these hydrogen, um, the, these atoms where you have carbon, um, like carbon dioxide, right? Carbon dioxide looks like that. And what you're gonna have is uh, the electrons are gonna spend more time around the oxygen than the carbon. So these are gonna end up being kind of relatively negative. This is gonna be kind of relatively positive. And then what do you have here? Oh, look, you can put some waters right around here. Why don't you put the positive ends of waters around here? Why don't you put the negative ends of waters around here? Look at that. Yes, I know my, uh, my bond angles are off, but it makes it a little more visually obvious. Um, and now we have water being able to surround it, right? Because we have relative positive and negative charges. It's a polar covalent bond. So if your polar covalent bond is in there are molecules in your, uh, there are atoms in your molecules that are more attractive than others. Electrons are going to spend more time there, and then we'll get these partial charges. And that's all water needs to hydrogen bond specifically um, and dissolve. Okay, but what if you don't? What if... You are, you have no charge. Okay, well, if you have no charge, then how's water going to hold on to you, right? And why doesn't, why doesn't sodium dissolve in water? Why can't I dissolve metals in water? They don't dissolve very well, if I remember correctly. And that's because, well, the negative and the positive ends don't, just don't have anything to grab onto. So if you are non-polar covalent, you don't have you don't play the magnetism game, then water's got nothing. Water can't dissolve you. So, meh. And it's worth pointing out that uh, solvent, solute, and sol uh, solution so if we think of our classic diner salt container and we think of a glass of delicious, nutritious water, right? So we have water here, we have salt, we add them, and we know that that's going to dissolve. There's a whole oceans out there telling us that that dissolves. Now, a couple quick things before we move on to acids and bases. First, this is not a chemical reaction. I can totally undo this quite easily. All I have to do is dissolve off the or um, uh, uh, bake off the water, right? Uh, take a pan of salt water, heat it up, boil the water off, and I'll get my salt right back. Right, so this is not a chemical reaction. I can totally easily undo this. I can even do this, undo this with a battery, right? Take two probes from a strong positive and negative end and zoop, I'll pull the salt right out of the water. And things like uh, rock candy. I mean, you can pull the sugar out of rock candy. Um, pull the sugar right out of the solution and make rock candy without there being a chemical reaction. It doesn't heat up, it doesn't bubble. It's in, you know Those things that we expect in a chemical reaction just don't happen here. When you add salt to water, there's, there is no chemical reaction. So with that, um, this is the sol 
ute. That means that that dissolves into the solvent. So there's actually less of this and more of this. That's how it's defined. Often we see it as like Gatorade powder into water. So we often think of water as the solvent, but it doesn't have to be. You can actually dissolve more sugar into water than there is water. So you, if this were sugar instead of water, you can actually do this so much that they flip and water becomes the solute and sugar becomes the solvent. So it's actually a question of ratios. Whatever there is less of, that's the solute because that's being dissolved into whatever there is more of. And that whole thing is going to make a solution. Boom, there it is. Okay, so solutions. Completed. Whether you dissolve in water or not is completely defined by what kind of bonds are holding you together. If you're ionic or polar covalent, ding, we got a chance. If you're not, you mean like oil? Yeah, I do mean like oil. Then pfft, you're not going to dissolve. Whatever there's less of is the solute. Whatever there's more of is the solvent. Put them together, you get a solution. That was fun, wasn't it? No, I actually hate it. It was incredibly boring. But luckily, I'm playing video games in a different screen while this plays. So it looks like I'm watching, but really I'm learning nothing. Wow, that's uh, painfully accurate. Moving on. Let's talk about acids and bases. Last thing we have to do for the 2019-2020 chemistry class. And the question is, of course, I've got two substances. Kapink, kapink. And I want to know, what are they? Hmm. Well, there's a lot of things I could do. I could taste them, which is the worst idea. <laughs> If you're like, I wonder what this substance is, first thing you should not do is put it in your mouth. Hmm, tastes bitter. Huh. Uh, don't do that, but we could. That would be one thing that we could do. We could also just feel it, right? Um, because uh, bases are uh, slippery, right? And we could see whether it conducts electricity or metal dissolves in it. There's, there's things that we can do. But what we decided as scientists is let's do something super repeatable. So let's just throw all this in water. So I throw my two substances in water, and we're going to assume that I put them in separate vessels uh, so they do not interact with each other. Because if they do, they might not interact with the water, it may interact with each other instead. So we have them in separate vessels, and we just throw a bunch of water in. Or technically, we throw it into water. There we go. That looks like enough water. And then we watch. And if nothing happens, if it looks like this in the end, right, then they're not an acid or a base and absolutely nothing happened. And that's gonna be true for most stuff, right? Most things that I throw into water just do nothing, right? I mean, so like all the metals, they're not gonna be acidic or basic. Um, they may rust, but that's a chemical reaction and a different thing. But th this, there's just gonna be just water and junk, right? But for certain things, for very specific chemicals, that's not the case. Things actually happen. And there's two things that can happen. Either water can be given something or something can be taken from water. So if water is given something, such as a single proton, which means that this mysterious substance has single protons, um, on the very end of it. And we remember, of course, that a single proton is actually a hydrogen atom in disguise. Dun, dun, dun. So if it has hydrogen way at the ends, and those hydrogens can be given to water, so one gets stuck right there at the top because the top is negative, and this one gets stuck right there at the top, and this is uh, because that's negative, then we found... I find out that that was an acid. But here's the party pooper part. Because it gave away its protons, it's no longer an acid because it reacted. So it was an acid back when it had these things. When the protons were on, it was totally an acid, right? And we can kind of only give that name like retroactively. It's like, oh yeah, Back when you were an acid, you were an acid. But once we throw you in water and you react with water, bang, bang, 
you are no longer an acid. Wah, 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 wah. So we can kind of like retroactively uh, backdate it and say, oh, there was a time you were an acid because you gave that. And now what that means is that water has become, those waters have become, there it is, hydronium ions. So this water is now hydronium ion because it has three hydrogens. And this water is a hydronium ion too because it has three hydrogens. And that means that this acid used to have these little protons, which get the super fun name, acidic hydrogens. So if you have an acidic hydrogen and you're willing to donate it to water to make it into a hydronium ion, you're an acid. Now, the thing that uh, students often get wrong is they think that then acid only reacts with water. Wrong. This acid has gun, will travel. It will throw this proton at you. It will throw it at metals. It will throw it wherever it can, right? Now we test if it's an acid. We test whether it has an acidic hydrogen using water, but acids will, re will react with anything. Uh, if you don't believe me, Put your face in sulfuric acid. Hold it there for a couple days. Just see what happens. Don't do that. That's a really bad idea. Um, but it will react with your face and you'll be sad. The good thing is it won't react as badly as if it were a base. But So this um, acid will react with anything that will allow it. Now, acids tend to react primarily with inorganic materials the best, which means uh, metals and stone. Uh, acids are really good at donating these protons to metals and stones and really upsetting them and uh, reacting with them so that uh, they dissolve, right? And that's how we like etch, um, etch metals and etch like gravestones using acid. Okay, so there's the acid. So if I remember correctly, if acids they t they add a proton to water making hydronium so let's just put that right up there and that makes this an acid as long as it has an acidic hydrogen okay so acids give acidic hydrogens to water or anything else that it's willing to burn bases go yoink and they steal they are proton eaters how <laughs> nom 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 and I'll take one from you too. Ah, um, nom 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 nom. And they actually steal a hydrogen, so that the so the water no longer looks like this, and it actually loses a hydrogen, and becomes a wump that. So if I rip one of the hydrogens off of this, I get this. So bases will rip a proton, rip a hydrogen, just the proton. They leave the electrons there. They rip one of these hydrogen protons off, making it hydronium. And uh, if it's a base. Now here's the thing, just like acid, the moment it does that and it fills up, it tells us it's the base, but the problem is, is the second it does that, it's no longer a base. Because bases are any substance that will eat protons. So once it gets filled up, once it's eaten enough protons, oh, I'm so full, I can't eat another one, then it loses its name base right because a base is anything that can rip a hydrogen off of water and once it fills up and not willing to do that then it no longer is a base so bases are the exact opposite bases steal a proton from water um, be making hydroxide and again a common misconception that i get from students is that bases only act react with water that uh, that's the only thing they'll burn. No, they will gladly pull protons off of you. Uh, bases are really worrisome to organic materials. So that's like humans and animals and stuff like that. So if somebody comes in and is like, hey, I'm gonna force you to either be burnt by an acid or a base, you should say acid, unless you're made out of metal or rock. Then you should say the other one. Uh, because bases uh, really, really, really upset uh, organic materials and that's why our stomach could have an acid or a base like either of those would work and we decide you know let's put the less terrible thing in our stomach let's put acid in our stomach 
um, because this would be really bad. So that's it. If you donate a proton to water and make hydronium, you are an acid. If you rip protons from water, making them hydroxide, you are a base. And that's all you need to know. So, the more you know. From Jay's house, I say, see you, chemistry class. <laughs>